Now, last year, I reviewed the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 8. Now, I really did like it, but it wasn't a big change over the Gen 7 from the previous year. So you still have that 16 to 9 aspect ratio, pretty much the same layout, a few, few minor changes here and there, but nothing revolutionary. But that all changes here in 2021. Lenovo decided to move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. They decided to make a few changes internally, outfitted with 11th gen Intel Tiger Lake processors with the integrated XE graphics and give it that legendary ThinkPad treatment in terms of the build quality and that outstanding keyboard. Now I have both the Full HD Plus model and the UHD Plus model in the studio. We're gonna take a look at it today to find out what you can expect with the Gen 9. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9, here for 2021. Coming up. Now, while we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, the model running the Core i7 processor with the UHD Plus resolution is a review unit sent over by Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, the Core i5 version with the Full HD Plus was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit of that SKU. Pricing starts at $1636.60, but keep your eyes open on the Lenovo site. They run a lot of sales. I was able to pick up the Core i5 model for a little over $1,400 with tax. So keep in mind that sale was running for a while. It was over $1,000 off the initial asking price. But again, keep your eyes open on that website. They do vary the price quite a bit, so you need to be vigilant. Now, again, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. So within the shipping box, there is a smaller box which contains the unit. We'll get to that in just a moment. Then you also get a 65 watt USB-C power adapter and they also give you the extension cord. Now, I did see one other video that did unbox the Gen 9 and didn't have this inner box, which was quite curious, but mine does have it. It's the red and black that we've come to know with that inner box. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself, but inside the box, you also get some documentation, which includes a setup guide, as well as some warranty information. Holding the unit for the first time, and once again, you're struck by just how thin and light this X1 Carbon is. With that magnesium alloy chassis, this thing is super premium, and it's also very rugged with that military standard rating. That means this can take a licking and keep on ticking. Now, if you elect to go with the UHD Plus model, that will come with a carbon fiber weave on the outer shell. And here is that woven carbon fiber weave on that UHD Plus model. It's really nice, and as you can see, there is a difference between the regular black versus that woven carbon fiber weave. I'm curious to know what you think about the difference between the two. Let me know in the comment section below. And as indicated on the bottom, this unit is made out of carbon fiber and magnesium. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side. We get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is great. They do data charge, display out. You can drive multiple 4K monitors or one 8K monitor. You get a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and an HDMI 2.0 port. Moving over to the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack. You also get a second USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and finally a Kensington lock port to round out the ports. Notably missing, there's no micro SD card slot and there's no Ethernet port. But otherwise, it's a pretty good port selection. Now, if you opt to get the optional 5G on this, then there will be a nano SIM slot as well. Now to put its size into perspective, here it is with its smaller sibling, the X1 Nano that I recently reviewed. And as you can see, the Nano is simply smaller than the X1 Carbon, which is pretty svelte in its own right. This is a good indication of the footprint you'd get between the different units. 
And here it is with its bigger brother, the X1 Extreme Gen 3. And as you can see, the X1 Extreme Gen 3 is noticeably bigger. And here is the Nano on top of that, showing the disparity between all three. And just like the X1 Nano, this also sports a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Now, the benefits of the 16 to 10 aspect ratio, as I've mentioned in the past in other videos, is that you get that taller nature of the display. That means you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You'll see more on the display. And that's good for productivity work. And for those wondering, here it is next to the X1 Titanium Yoga that I recently checked out. And as you can see, the difference between the 16 to 10 and 3 to 2, the 3 to 2 a little bit taller than the 16 to 10. Now, if you want to check out that video I did on the X1 Titanium Yoga, I highly encourage you to check it out. The link will be in the description below. And the other thing Lenovo's touting here are slimmer bezels on Gen 9 over Gen 8. And as you can see the difference between the two here, you'll notice that difference, although not quite as substantial as you might think, but you will notice that difference. So we have the 16 to 10 aspect ratio with the slimmer bezels here on Gen 9. Now, when it comes to the display, there are actually four options. You can go with three full HD plus options and one UHD plus option, which is going to be really nice. But of course, you'll pay a premium for that. Now, I have both the Full HD Plus option as well as the UHD Plus option, which I received as a review unit from Lenovo. Let's take a look at them now. And I have to say, it's a really nice display with some really deep blacks, good white points, good contrast, and it has a pretty low Delta E score, although I'd like to see it below two. It got 2.09. A little bit lower would have been better. Now, as far as the coverage of the color gamut, it is good. 95% sRGB, 71% Adobe RGB, 71% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 66% NTSC makes this a good choice for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And it's also a bright display. Now, Lenovo claims this will get up to 400 nits in terms of brightness. They're pretty accurate on that. I actually measured 402, even better. And as I mentioned, this has an anti-glare coating. That means you won't get any unnecessary glare or reflections, which is always good. I'm more of a fan of these matte display types rather than the shiny, glossy display, which show a lot of reflections and glare. And speaking of a glossy display, this is the UHD Plus model that Lenovo just sent me, and this has a resolution of 3840 by 2400. As I mentioned, a UHD Plus resolution with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. This is an IPS display. It's also an HDR display. That means you're going to get the really high dynamic range, especially when you're consuming content that is optimized for HDR. You're going to absolutely love it on this display. Now, it is a glossy display, as I mentioned, so you will notice some glare and reflections, more so than you would on the matte display of that full hd plus that we just took a look at but you get some really outstanding black levels really great white points excellent contrast and a super low delta e score of 0.63 which is outstanding that means this is a really color accurate display it also covers the color gamut extremely well 100 srgb 90 percent adobe rgb 95 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 86 percent ntsc making this an excellent choice for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And it has some pretty slim bezels, which gives it a nice, sleek, modern look. That's not too bad, although you'll notice the slight chin it does have on the bottom. So this is the front-facing camera on the all-new ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021. Now, this is a 720p 30 frames per second webcam. It's a Windows Hello webcam with auto detection. It'll log you in when you are in front of it and it'll log you out when you walk away. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality from the mics? I want to know. And like other ThinkPads in the line, this also has a Think Shutter switch. It allows you to turn off the webcam to give you more security and privacy. And something else that's new with Gen 9 is the fact that the power button now doubles as a fingerprint scanner. It's located above the keyboard below the display. Registered my finger each and every time I used it. It worked well, it was fast, everything good on that front. Okay, let's talk about user upgradability. And I love the fact that Lenovo makes it super easy to get inside. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips set screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. Now, once inside, you'll notice there is a change from Gen 8. You'll notice the dual fans for cooling. Gen 8 only had a single fan, which was a larger fan, but now they've gone to two smaller fans to employ their thermal solution here. We'll talk about thermals in the full review. 
And the other change is you'll notice it now has a 57 watt hour battery that's up over the 51 watt hour battery of Gen 8. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, well, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that, but you can configure it with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. Now, the only thing that is user replaceable is the SSD, and you can get this with up to one terabyte of SSD storage. Now, my review unit that Lenovo sent over has 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. My own unit running the Core i5 has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Now, this has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. Now, fortunately, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that, but you can get this with optional LTE or 5G LTE on this unit. Again, Again, it's a nice option to have, especially if you're a business executive on the go. Now, there are some differences in terms of the keyboard layout over Gen 8. Now, you can see that the speaker grills are on the side of the keyboard as opposed to the top, and they also move the power button to the top, which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. And for those wondering, yes, you can still open the lid with one finger. Now let's talk about the keyboard. Now this has, of course, the legendary ThinkPad keyboard that we know and we love. Of course, it's a little bit shallow this time around, although not a deal breaker, but I did notice it wasn't quite as good as the previous generations in terms of that key travel, but you still get that excellent tactile feedback. Your fingers never feel like they're gonna bottom out and it's extremely comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It's also a multi-stage backlight in terms of that keyboard that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment it's also a spill resistant keyboard and i love that feature since i'm always spilling things such as water and coffee at least we have a chance to survive a spill with this laptop and the other thing you'll notice, there's now a bigger touchpad this time around. Now, this is a precision touchpad that is really responsive. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Really nice performance here with that touchpad. And of course, it has the track point, part of the ThinkPad DNA. It's been there many years, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Now, having said that, it is very responsive, another way to navigate through the OS. And one of the things I love about the ThinkPads is the fact that you can fold the screen down to 180 degrees flat as you see here. And that, of course, will allow you to get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. I like that option. The X1 Carbon Gen 9 sports the Dolby Atmos speaker system with two upward firing speakers, as I mentioned earlier, and two downward firing subwoofers to give you really pretty rich sound. I got to say, not bad, filling up a room rather nicely. It gets pretty loud and there is a hint of bass. I'll talk more about the sound in the full review, but suffice it to say, my initial 24 hours with this unit, the sound has actually been pretty good. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I purchased the Core i5 version with eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage. I just took delivery from Lenovo, the Core i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. That one has the UHD plus display. But unfortunately, there is a defect on that review unit that Lenovo sent over. The fans are not working, so I can't properly test the performance. A new one is being sent out on Monday, so I should have it early next week in time to do my full review so stay tuned for that but in the meantime here are some of the numbers from that core i5 1135 g7 with the integrated iris xe graphics performance has been good so far we'll get into that and more in that full review Okay, what do I think about the X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021? I am absolutely loving this laptop so far. The move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio is a good move in my opinion. I like that aspect ratio. I love the keyboard on this, although you will notice that the key travel is a bit more shallow than we're used to on the X1 Carbon line, but still nonetheless, still the best keyboard out there in my opinion, or among the best out there. You can't argue with that. Now it is a spill resistant keyboard, which I absolutely love. Love the long battery life i'm seeing especially out of that full hd plus model i am still testing the uhd plus model so expect less battery life on that because of the higher resolution but i will bring you all those numbers in my full review outstanding build quality of course with that military standard grade rating here dual thunderbolt 4 usb 4 ports on this the optional 5g on this is fantastic especially if you are that business executive on the go now the negatives here ram and wi-fi are not user upgradable but i'm not surprised by that here in 
2021. No SD card reader is a little bit of a downer. No LAN port either. You'll have to use a dongle for that. And it still has a 720p webcam here in 2021. I am hoping for a move to 1080p. We didn't get it. So that is something you'll need to deal with here in 2021. But no real deal breakers so far, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put it through its paces and bring you all the numbers in my full review. I will be testing both the Core i5 model and the Core i7, and I will bring you the numbers, the thermals, the metrics, everything you expect from my review. And that will be coming very soon. So what do you think about the X1 Carbon Gen 9? So far, so good, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put it through its paces. I got a lot of testing to do. Now, something to keep in mind, the UHD Plus model that Lenovo just sent me that I received yesterday or last night, rather, and that one is actually defective. That's going back on Monday. The fans are not working on it. There is a defect, of course, in it. But I spoke with Lenovo already. They're sending me a new one early next week. So stay tuned. That will be in the full review. So that's why I couldn't show the numbers for the Core i7 version in this video. But you did see some numbers of the Core i5. Again, I got a lot more testing to do. I'll test the performance, battery life, the metrics on both displays you saw already. I'll bring you even more in the full review. So stay tuned for that. That is coming very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.